I don't make videos to make money. I make money so I can make videos. So it's super relatable because it's it's just so raw and authentic. And there's like Will Smith behind me. Oh and my it's God. like, here I am yeah. filming this, in essence, a big campaign, mm -hmm. a high budget campaign with a GoPro. Are you ready? Today, we're gonna to be talking about how this camera right here, a GoPro, not only changed our lives, but maybe saved them. Is that a, is that a stretch? <laughs> no, I don't think so. For me, it's not. <laughs> so we'll talk about that in a little bit because this camera right here, and pretty much any action camera on the market could very well develop your career. So don't for a second think that this is not serious enough to get started. Today with me, we have an incredible guest, a friend of mine for a long time now, but it's all been done through social media. And today I literally met him in person. I was like, have we not met before? And surely enough, this is our first time meeting. Welcome, Chris Rogers. Thanks for having me, man. I think this is like eight years in the making it's crazy it really is yeah no i've been watching your stuff for a long long time um you know i started off with the gopro yeah you started off with the gopro and you've stuck with the gopro I'm still using a gopro i mean i think we both kind of found each other's social media when we were both in the philippines at the same time and this was like 2014 2015 and they just released like that little session camera. I think we both got sent one. Yes. And then I remember there was like a list of all the people. And then I saw your name and I was like, wait. And you're, you're, you'd had that selfie with the elephant go viral. Yes. And I think that's where I picked it up. And then we followed each other and mm -hmm. we just always missed each other. Yeah. When traveling, like I would be in Bali, you would be here. And then we'd. We just it never happened until now. Yeah, and and if you hear it in the accent, I mean you're from South Africa, yeah, is that right? I'm from Cape Town, born and bred. Mm -hmm. um, it's still home for me for a decent portion of the year. Yeah, um, yeah, you got to come visit, man. You'll love it. I cannot wait. Yeah, seriously, it's one of the places I dream of doing one month and just completely planting up my life there just to try it out and see how it feels. Yeah, it's becoming uh, it's becoming a hub for creators. I mean, yeah. Nick Nicholas is spending decent time there. Sam Calder's there. Yep, there's a decent hub of creators, and it's. It's as cheap as Bali. Mm -hmm. It's got a California vibe to it, Hawaii's landscape, but yeah. really affordable. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and ask you, Chris, yeah. for the sake of the audience, tell me a little bit about you in 30 seconds. What is it that you do? Who are you? Go for it. Uh, Chris Rogers. I am a travel and action sports filmmaker. Yeah. Travel the world, working with some of the best action sports athletes on the planet. And I try to have as much fun as possible while doing that. Hell yeah. Put it up on my YouTube channel every now and again. <laughs> and you're an entrepreneur too. Yeah. I um yeah, I have quite a few side businesses, I guess. Um as a co-founder of G Dome, which, you know, we make dome ports and housings for originally started with just a GoPro because there was one company making it and it costed the same price of as a GoPro. And we're like, this is ridiculous. It's such a cool accessory. Mm -hmm. Surely there's a way to make it more affordable. And that's what we did. Yeah. Um, and it was really awesome. And that's how you get the overwater, underwater exactly. shot, right? Overwater, underwater shots. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it was great doing it for GoPro. And like, wait, what if we could make this for a smartphone? So we made the first, and I still think it is the only universal dome port for every smartphone on the market mm. at an affordable price. And that's been like, our best product to date for sure like you can even put a gopro in it i've put a film camera in it that's dope which is really cool um, that's really dope yeah. so you get like a film over under shot um, cool. which was really epic and then now we've recently tapped into making them for bigger dslr cameras um so that's that's been that's been cool i'm not involved with the day-to-day -day operations of that company um there's a, a good friend of mine back home and we yeah i just helped develop and test it for it and then i got some equity in the company which was cool and i've just kind of you know handled a little bit of just product testing and marketing i guess um and then more recently i've invested in a, a startup beverage company back home a hard a hard seltzer hmm. so like white claw like that yeah that isn't a thing in south africa okay and obviously i know how big it is traveling in america i was just like man yeah and i saw that like one or two starting to launch in South Africa. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And there was a little one I stumbled across Instagram. I saw they followed me. I was like, oh, this one looks cool. I'm going to like find out where I can buy it. And they're like, hey, we'll come drop some off. And then I tried. I was like, man, this is really good. Yeah. It has no sugar in it, like minimal calories. I yeah. Like, wow, it's good. I was like, I wonder if they're open to like getting involved. So we negotiated, made an offer. And yeah, it's been awesome. It's like cool to be part of a startup again are you are you handling like their social media or what do you bring to the pie yeah social media and all the content and 
marketing and obviously certain things I have access to, I guess, mm. um, back home. So that's that's been really fun, really different. Um, you very quickly realize how old school that beverage industry is. You know, like people don't buy alcohol online. So you've yeah. got to be on the shelf. Yeah. Getting on the shelf is really hard when you've got these massive corporations that just like yeah. bully everyone. It's like, wow. But I mean, the the real plan, um, you know, you with with a company like that is you want to grow it and then have mm-hmm. a big buyout in a couple of years time. Yep. So yep. we just want to have fun. All the best to you on that one. That's Thanks. super epic, dude. Yeah, just going to break all the rules and just go crazy with it. <laughs> go for it, man. Yeah. Send it. Well, some of the things that I think is going to be very, you know, interesting about today's chat is that you now have an audience, uh, well over half a million. Uh, you've done exceptionally well on YouTube being your biggest platform. I think I yeah. just checked about yeah. 370,000 subscribers on Instagram. You're, you're getting close to that 200,000. So, um, you know, one of the things that most people tend to think and tend to think uh, incorrectly is that in order to become a creator, you constantly need to be graduating your equipment, moving from point and shoot camera to a DSLR, from DSLR to the top of the mirrorless lineups. But in reality, the equipment is secondary to the person holding it. And when you have the right equipment, it doesn't make a difference if it's $500 or $50,000 for the setup. Take it from me, a guy that bought a C500 Mark II. I literally dropped 20 grand on a camera during the pandemic. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to learn how to make videos at another. But in reality, it's just the wrong gear led to the wrong results. It was more time consuming to set up, to turn it on. It was harder to bring it around. Therefore, it wasn't always in use and it wasn't always available when I needed to get the shot. But how beautiful is it when you're like, oh, there's something cool going on. You can pull the camera out of your pocket and bam, you're ready. It's insane. And I think like just the admin involved with bigger cameras is a reason I don't use them that much. I have a Sony. I got two nice lenses. I'll use it for some behind the scenes when I'm, you know, vlogging or shooting a tutorial or something. But every time I put it in my camera bag, I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing mm-hmm. weighs so much and there's so much you got to control. Whereas like a GoPro and a phone do so much. Yes, they have their limitations for sure. But mm-hmm. it's nuts how I shoot so much content these days on my mm-hmm. phone, my GoPro and a drone. Like you can put, give me those three items, put them in a backpack and I can go create yeah. any video. Like I don't need a DSLR. And Every if you're time. a visual watcher right now, we're, we'll have overlaid some of Chris's stuff so you can see what he's managing to get out of the GoPro. Um, and I, I think it's interesting because whenever you're in like, you know, I remember as a kid, I go to like the Costco or the Best Buy, you would see uh, the GoPro trailer playing on, on display. And you'd be like, oh my God, I can't wait to get this camera because then I'm going to shoot this. But then you get it and you're like, my videos don't look like this. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. So I'm, how do you get the most out of your action cameras? How are you packing that punch in that $400 little pocket size camera? Yeah, it's taken some time. I've, I've come to realize that a, a GoPro is very easy to use, but not that easy to master as with mm-hmm. anything, I think. And, you know, you learn as you, you know, just use something and, and do it. The more you do it, the better you get it. And you kind of learn, okay, wait, this lighting is better and this situation needs this many frames. And, you know, you start playing with, with you know, a GoPro not as you can adjust the ISO, the sharpness, whatever. So I found, and I've told GoPro, you know, the stock settings are really bad. And I, I think they've, they've definitely started to make some changes, but out of the box, the standard settings were not that great. And now every now and again, you know, I just got the new camera a few days ago and, I accidentally didn't change the sharpness and I was looking back at like 5k footage. I was like, Oh, why does this not look right? I was like, Mm. Oh my goodness. The sharpness was like on the complete wrong setting for Mm. someone like me. I have that eye. I can see that the average person won't really, but to me, that'll make a difference. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't even realize they can go into the back end of that camera and really tailor it to be whatever you want it to be. Right. You can drop the contrast, the sharpness, the saturation, I think that's probably, you know, out of box, you probably assume it's a little bit too oversaturated or or what's your feeling on it? Yeah, it used to be. Um, nowadays, they've got like, I think three color profiles is like flat, um, normal and then vibrant. So vibrant like the pretty over contrast one. Mm-hmm. Normal is kind of what I stick to. I, a while back, I was shooting flats on, I think it was like the seven or eight because the vibrant color was just too much and it would kind of make the exposure a bit weird. So I stuck to the flat, but yeah. Nowadays they got it pretty dialed. I almost never set my like um, I never set white balance. It's always on auto, yeah. <laughs> which I think quite a lot of people would be surprised to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, the most important thing is just like setting my max and min ISO, 
and mm-hmm. setting my sharpness to low and then that's kind of it like the the auto features in the gopro are pretty pretty impressive do you think you could build a full youtube vlog channel with just a gopro in 2022 and 23 about to be right around the corner yes uh i mean i would also recommend getting a drone Mm -hmm. so affordable these days they're the same price as a gopro some of these entry level ones yeah just having that other elements is really nice so just a gopro yes it's possible but if you own a gopro you probably own an iphone or a smartphone Mm -hmm. and you could probably afford a cheap drone like those three things like guaranteed no problem you don't need Mm -hmm. I mean, iPhone's like double the price of a GoPro. It's really it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what is the iPhone accomplishing that the GoPro is kind of lacking? Just that, um, you know, GoPro is like a it's like a 15 mil camera, and mm-hmm. you've got the telephoto lens and all that kind of stuff from on a on a iPhone. So it's your it's your zoom lens. That's yeah. what it really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, I'm uh, being so rude. I've not yet invited our guest. Would you like a drink? I'd love a drink. All right, so what we do here is we just go a little snap and it just magically appears. You ready? Three, two, one. And then we show the fact that Ryan just walked in with gloves. (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) I'm just having a little bit of honey whiskey today. Oh, that's good. I'm on a bit of a sugar cleanse right now and this is definitely not helping, but (laughs) that's all right. We got you a delicious pink GT. Pink GNT. Very nice. Very popular drink back home. Indeed. And so, um, you know, I want to hear your thoughts. Like, you're growing right now faster on YouTube than you are on Instagram. Growing is an interesting choice of words, but it's... <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I mean, my my socials are, I wouldn't say stagnant, mm-hmm. but they're not growing at the paces that they have been in the past, but also haven't been posting. So, mm. like, when I do post consistently on YouTube, I do see really good growth. Yep. And I'm really bad at, I think, holding myself accountable mm-hmm. sometimes to be like, okay, finish this project, get it out. But at the same time, I want to create like a little bit of a buffer for myself of like, cool, let's finish four videos. Mm-hmm. So you have like one a week. So you've got like a month buffer. And then just yep. while you're shooting on the go, you don't have to be releasing it there because you've got that buffer. If something happens, you it doesn't matter if you don't get a video finished that week, you've got kind of four backlogged ready to go. Yeah. Because when I have been consistent on YouTube, that's when I've seen the most like monumental growth i Mm -hmm. remember like 2016 i was kind of finding my feet in this like you know new social media world and then like at the end of 2017 i was like cool i know what i got to do and i think i had like twenty thousand subscribers on my channel and like come february march i was like boom let's go one video a week and i kept it up for like four months i think my channel went from like 20 to like 80,000 subscribers. Yeah. In three months. And I was wow. just like, oh my goodness, consistency is everything. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a couple months later, I was consistent again for another three months. Bam, another 100,000 subscribers. So I was like, okay. The- so you're not consistent right now? Oh my gosh, no, not at all. So is it because your attention's being tied up by something else? I know you work on other projects outside of this, which I'm sure we'll get to maybe yeah. even now, but what? why is it that you're not fully in on YouTube if, if you've seen that? Um, I think it's biting off more than I can chew. Okay. I'm um, also quite a lone wolf operator. Like I come here, I see you with your giant team around you. I'm just like, man, that's crazy. Which is, it's something I've thought about doing. And I think I need to find what it is exactly that I want to outsource. So mm-hmm. I have just signed to an agency to just manage YouTube brand deals for me. Yep. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes for the next couple months. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know, have somebody handle the negotiating, the payment, chasing for all that stuff where yeah. I can just, for me, I really enjoy filming and I enjoy editing. Like that's what I'm good at. Yeah. I really enjoy that side. So I don't, I don't necessarily want to outsource that much. Mm-hmm. I would love to hire um, an extra filmer to come film sort of behind the scenes for me. Yeah. And then to a certain degree, have that person maybe edit a bit for me, but I also really enjoy the editing process yeah. on, on some edits. Some edits I don't enjoy and there'll be certain content that I edit be like this is something I should be outsourcing for sure yeah so that's something I do need to look at getting into um yeah another reason with being inconsistent is you know I'll work on projects I'm still hired a lot as a professional filmmaker so um you know people don't care about my social media or anything they're like hey we love your content we love what you do mm-hmm. and they give me full creative freedom which is cool so, yeah. so then now what I try to do is I try to pivot that I, like luckily I've built my channel and my follow into a position where I don't really take on those clients unless it's a cool enough project where I go like, Hey, I could actually mm-hmm. make a YouTube video out of this. Or the odd case is like, they're just paying me a crap ton of money. And it's like, well, this is, this is, I might as well do this. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I try to say no to those a lot. 
Anytime um, you see a YouTuber take a brand deal they don't normally take, just know it's because they got the bag. Yeah, yeah. Big time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, um, I mean, we've all seen people, <laughs> seen people do that. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. Who, like who don't generally run sponsorships, all of a sudden they're sponsored. You know, it's just everyone's got a price. Yeah. But there's certain brands like I've actually had to reject um, recently a tourism board that just didn't ethically align with me. So like there, there's yeah, still like hard boundaries. Names, but, um, yeah, there's certain tourism boards I also wouldn't work with. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so ultimately, like, you know, there's a combination of like get in the bag, but also some people are going to have their lines they got to yeah, draw. Yeah. So, But, you know, at the end of the day, people have bills to pay. You've got things to do. And, and it's free content for the consumer. It doesn't mm -hmm. it's not a, there's no paywall. It's not like a um an only fans or what's, yep. what's the other one the people the um the original one patreon, patreon yeah yeah yeah. Patreon, yeah so here's a question i think people are probably wondering like you are so heavily branded on gopro right it's been a blessing because it's a very exciting brand it's one that i think a lot of people uh especially filmmakers are are passionate about but do you ever feel like you've kind of held yourself back by sticking to one brand to to a certain degree, yes. Like I, I think I sometimes underestimate how synonymous the word GoPro is with my own brand. Um, and then I meet someone like, oh, you're Chris Rogers, you're the GoPro guy. It's like, okay, damn. Like, and <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it is that. But at the same time, it's like, you mm -hmm. know what? It's the equipment I use. It's the equipment I like to use. Like mm -hmm. there's, it, it's so much easier traveling mm -hmm. with GoPros than it is with professional cameras. Like I've seen on your channel, you rock up in Egypt and people steal this professional stuff and they're like, uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that was a nightmare. Yeah. So I, I managed to sneak a drone into Egypt. Didn't fly it because I was too scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the funniest thing was like, yeah. I wrapped it in t-shirts, stuck it like deep in my... Um, in my checked in bag, obviously kept the batteries with me. And if they mm -hmm. asked, I had like the little adapter. I was like, no, it's a power bank. And yeah. man, the guy was like looking through my hand luggage and he found a prop, like a folded oh. up Mavic prop. And he was like, where's the drone? Where's the, I was like, it's not here, man. Like it's, it had already been checked in or whatever. Yeah. I was like, he's like, this is drone. I was like, yeah, but the drone's not with me. Like it's not, I didn't bring it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then eventually he <laughs> let it go. Love that. Um, but, but also at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you're traveling around as soon as you like, I've gotten away with a lot of things mm -hmm. and, and there are these old rules in certain places like, oh, you can't take photos. And it's like, to me, that's the most ridiculous thing ever. It's like, dude, mm -hmm. people are going to do more damage with an iPhone than I am with the GoPro if you're yeah, trying yeah. to not let people film. And as soon as you take out a big camera with a lens, people start asking questions. They're like, what mm -hmm. are you doing here? Why is it? You draw way more attention to you. Yeah. Whereas if you rock up with a GoPro or a drone, an iPhone, everybody has that. There's no attention. It's like, oh, it's just another dumb tourist, you know. Mm -hmm. I get pulled across at customs or something and they open my bag. Mm -hmm. I don't have to explain myself. Yeah. You know, like there's obviously countries I go to where and every creator does it. They don't go get the correct work visa or whatever, which they shouldn't have to, but that's that's a deep rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Um so <laughs> on that side it makes my life yeah. a lot easier. Sure my bag is full of more accessories than clothes. Yep. But I mean, yeah, you, I kind of get away with more because of it i i love filming with a gopro especially in places like the middle east like there's parts of the world where people are just not very open to having a big lens pointed at them and like you said i mean in egypt especially it was like no cameras here no cameras here so i filmed a lot with my action camera I filmed a lot of just on undercover stuff too but ultimately it was like stressful it was a hassle and you know we're not here to do bad we're here just to share the positive beautiful side of the world but they always kind of have this high protective wall up because they don't know what you're filming. Yeah. So it's it's tricky, but I love the GoPro for that. And I also love the fact that, you know, I just recently started a second channel. So yeah. on my second channel, it's basically just filmed on whatever camera I have on me. But generally speaking, I've been doing it with my action camera. And I'll tell you that people do not care that it was filmed on an action camera. They're not thinking to themselves, oh, if the camera was a little sharper or if the low light performance was better, I wish you had a better microphone. I mean, that part may be sometimes. Yeah, the audio for sure. Audio would be nice. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's definitely something beautiful about having audio like this. I wish I could do that with every video. But, you know, it's definitely not a necessity. The most important thing is the story and it's the connection. And when you can build that connection in such an authentic way, I feel like... I'm more authentic as a per, uh, like as as myself when I film with my action camera than I do with my vlog camera. Mm. I don't know if it's just like years of conditioning where I've gotten to a place where my vlog camera has become like main channel, let's go, like pump up the energy, be more of you, like or sorry, be more of what people want from mm. you versus like my GoPro is just like, all right, what's up guys? Like I'm 
freaking tired today. Like, you know, I'm not feeling great. Had a big fight last night with my girlfriend. Like, you know, that that, that energy kind of is more honest and real. Whereas the main channel energy is more like, okay, even if like my life is in shambles right now and I'm panicking about something, I'm just going to pretend everything's freaking chill, even though it ain't. <laughs> I think it's also a lot more relatable, you know, um, mm -hmm. a red camera or a C. 500 whatever you bought it's mm -hmm. a, you know 20 it's thousands of dollars it's not attainable to the average person where everyone yeah. looks at a video filmed on an iphone or a gopro mm -hmm. and they go well hey i can afford one of those or hey i have one of those i can do that it's more it's more attainable i remember like when i first started filmmaking like i really looked up to devon super tramp i was like man mm -hmm. this guy's videos are so cool i want to do that and he was yeah i mean in relative terms his gear back then wasn't that expensive he was just insanely good with the glide cam and yeah like, canon on it um, or and like he upgraded and then yeah, he upgraded exactly and, then... and it got so good but his stuff is so well polished mm -hmm. and so epic that it was like mm -hmm. you would watch one of his viral videos and go like that's so cool I'd, I'd love to do that but I feel like when you watched a GoPro video like that's so cool like wait but I could do that I can buy I can afford a GoPro yeah so I think that's another reason why I like to shoot with that is it just makes the content maybe a bit more relatable or attainable to yeah. the average person but also because a lot of the stuff i do kind of requires a gopro you know mm -hmm. like i film a lot of action sports with a lot of the best athletes in the world you know and a big part of me is i don't i don't like to film things that i can't do so if yeah. somebody messes me like oh man we're gonna go you know mountain biking down this crazy hill you should come film and it's gonna be epic like yeah it'll be cool but what am i gonna do i can't Mm -hmm. do these crazy jumps i'm gonna have to sit and like maybe fly the drone or set up like a cam it's kind of it's boring for me but someone says come wakeboarding i get to wakeboard someone says come on a surf trip i get to surf like mm -hmm. if i'm filming snowboarding i'm snowboarding right next to them with the gopro yeah if i fall like any other camera you're probably gonna break it yep. like a gopro can handle mm -hmm. you know hit, getting hit by boards and and people and smashing how many, into how many the cameras have you broken not that many yeah they don't like, break do they they don't it's not so much breaking it's more like i'll break the accessory mm -hmm. or um on the rare occasion something will happen and we'll like lose the gopro but usually yeah. i have floats on everything so obviously shooting around water becomes tricky um i haven't yeah i haven't really broken i haven't really broken many gopros so one of the things I wanted to ask you about was, as I said before, like, do you feel stuck doing a GoPro? But what I think is is interesting is like you've now, you know, whether you like it or not, your brand's synonymous with this action camera market. For sure. But it's also led you to a lot of opportunities, right? Like that's the beauty of your niche is like you have something that you're known for. It's better to be known for something than known for nothing. Exactly. And like, tell me about what that niche has opened up to you. Yeah, because... so it's really ni really niche in the sense of that GoPro. And I mean, I've, I've re really tapped into 360 over the last few years. And I, mm -hmm. I've got some really good 360 videos that I haven't really released to the public yet, um, which, I, which I really need to do. But you know, POV content is really immersive. You know, when you have a GoPro mm -hmm. in your mouth on your head and I've, I've been hired specifically by like big budget campaigns, like, Hey, we saw this type of video. We want our own thing. We want you to come and create a firsthand experience of what it's like to be in Abu Dhabi during the formula one. So people can watch this and be like, man, Abu Dhabi looks like a sick place to go for That's formula cool. one. Yeah. And here I am running around with a GoPro in my mouth next to F1 drivers and guys holding reds and you're on the live. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, yeah, yeah. I had people send me send yeah. me a video of their like TV pause and there's like Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo and then me in the, corner, <laughs> in the corner of the screen with the GoPro in my mouth and there's like Will Smith behind me. Oh and my it's God. like here I am yeah. filming this, in essence, a big campaign, mm -hmm. a high budget campaign with a GoPro. Yeah. No, for sure. There's There's definitely a market for that Mm -hmm. specific type of content and i enjoy filming it it's so much fun like you want to pay me to do a lot of really cool stuff and i get to have a lot of fun all i have to do is have a gopro in my mouth sure sign me up sign him up where you're holding yeah. like, a big camera and you add a distance and you got to zoom in like wh mm -hmm. like when i film surfing i think surfing is an interesting one where a lot of filmers are stuck on the beach with a long lens and you're in the heat or the rain or whatever it's like, Screw yeah that like if i'm filming surfing i just put the cameras on the athlete i just babysit them i get to surf it's correct like the only time yeah. i'm not surfing is when i'm flying the drone because mm. If you go watch one of my videos, there's never, ever a static shot. And I'm so strict about this. Like yep. if there's a shot that isn't moving, there is so much happening in the video 
that you wouldn't even notice it. Like that's yeah. an interesting thing that actually you bring up because I notice you know every single one of his edits have this like constant movement going on, whether it be forward, backwards, spiraling. Like you've always got this dynamic movement, and I think that's what the action cameras do so well. And even if for a filmmaker listening right now, that's like, look, I love my DSLR. Like great, they every tool serves a different purpose. But I think what the action cameras provide for any creator is really the opportunity to open up shots that aren't possible. You know, I, I love the Definitely. fact you attach your GoPro to like this Nerf ball thing that you throw, <laughs> right? And this thing spirals, or it doesn't spiral. It, it, doesn't, it actually it flies a little bit, but not much. Yeah, it doesn't actually spiral, but it glides through the air. And I've got, I've seen so many of these shots where, you know, you've got your, your crew jumping off a boat. Literally about to post something like that on, re on Reels today. And we got this crazy You'll one. See it, looks it, right like it, it looks like, yeah, put it on the screen. It looks like the craziest FPV shot. And then FPV pilots look at it and go like, how did you do that? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, speaking of FPV, it's another thing I need to get into. But yeah, um, yeah I think also with the GoPro is like, it, it also limits you in the sense of like, here you are with just a wide angle. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you can punch in a little bit nowadays, but it kind of forces you to be creative. It's like you're mm -hmm. stuck. It's like being stuck with one lens mm -hmm. that's just fixed at 16 mils. So now you've got to think outside the box. So in a way, I can, th I almost think it forces you to become a good cinematographer. Yeah. Like, I think people think I'm a better editor than I am. I mm -hmm. definitely rate myself more as a, as a better cinematographer than an editor. Like the way mm. I film, I think is better than the way I edit. Yeah. Um, so I think having gear that's limiting in a certain way will force you to think outside the box and take a different approach. Mm. We actually have uh, two members that really come to mind right now from Lost Creator Academy that actually they've built audiences in the millions now and they do it all with a GoPro. So they're posting, I think, at one time they were doing every day, then they moved to like every second day. Uh, but basically they're doing it with just the GoPro, the media mod, and uh, they stick a little tiny styrofoam thing on top of it. And that's their run and gun rig with a little handle. They do everything with it. And, uh, you know, you don't see comments on their on their channels from the millions of people watching that are complaining. They're just glad that they get to be a part of their journey. And I think that my thought is that if I were to... If I could A-B test my own business, I would have loved to seen how Lost LeBlanc would have turned out if I had never, ever upgraded my camera. If I had just stayed with a GoPro. I, I honestly, if I were to be a betting man and put money on it, I would say I would have been more successful if I had just created with the travel vlogs where there's no, you know, upgrading gear. Because wow. the thing that people don't realize about upgraded gear is that they slow themselves down tremendously. Like the amount of time to import files that are 10 times larger, the amount of stress that it causes to my computers to edit 4K footage, but like, you know, huge files. It's just constantly battling against the, the difficulties of using professional gear. Um, I really think that I would have been in a different place if I'd stuck to that relatable backpacker who vlogged maybe, you know, creating every second day, every third day instead of making these masterpiece weekly to bi-weekly videos. But again, that's uh, that would be an interesting <laughs> experiment. I'd like to ask God one day. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you, your channel would have definitely taken like a different different path, different path. Yeah, and you probably wouldn't have like the team that you have around you now. Right. But um, I don't know I kind of like the well polished content that you've gone into, but also you seem to really enjoy like the laid back vibe of your second channel as well. So I, I love it. Yeah. It's such a great return to the to the easy, real, authentic feel. I mean, um, one of the things that I've really noted though is that those that create authentic content, let's say at the expense of dropping cinematics, their audiences tend to be more loyal. They tend to have people that really connected for personal reasons. And that part's irreplaceable. You know, you can easily find somebody that comes up as the next Ben TK creating dope looking videos, but yeah. it's hard to replace a personality connection. And, and that's where, it, you know, people get so bogged down by camera gear. But I just think the GoPro, the, the Osmo actions of the world, they really give you everything that you need. It's, it's really true, especially what you're saying about like being that personality in front of camera. I'm not the biggest fan of, of vlogging myself. Like I don't, I'm not uncomfortable in being in front of the camera at all mm -hmm. um i don't like it that much but i know that there's a tremendous amount of value in doing it so mm -hmm. if you look at my older videos i'm not in front of the camera nearly as much yeah and some people aren't made for that and i think it's 
it's kind of sad because there's a part of social media that doesn't really have a space for those people you know it's like mm-hmm. same thing for athletes nowadays like athletes need to be this big social media personality it's like unless you are like a top like the best of the best your sponsors don't care you're winning every competition or whatever you don't have to be good or yep. well polished for interviews but if you're not that top three you know it's mm-hmm. kind of becomes tricky so um you know not everybody's made to be in front of the camera some people are incredible filmmakers incredible editors yeah um but with the way youtube and social media work it is almost required to a certain degree because at at the end of the day the audience does want to know who is behind the camera yep um it's a requirement yeah it, it really is so i do want to yeah be putting out more content but i do also really enjoy being behind the camera i don't want i don't want people coming to my channel and going Oh, like what's Chris up to? Like, I don't really share my personal life in front of the camera and I don't really plan on doing that much. Okay. When I was kind of starting out, I was around bigger YouTubers back home mm-hmm. and I kind of saw that there's pros and cons to it. You know, you put your personal life out and random strangers come up to you and like, oh, how's your mom doing? And is your dog all right? It's like, whoa, dude, like I don't know you. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't want that happening to me. Yeah. I don't like, not that I'm, you know, like a, someone who's like a massive creator like Casey Neistat, you know, he's talked about in a podcast, like he always stop for the selfie, but don't come up to him when he's eating, you know, at a restaurant, like oh, yeah, just yeah. leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like he will snap at you. That's he's <laughs> talked about it. And I understand yeah. that, but dude, if you want to, if you're trying to have lunch, a yeah. hundred people are bothering you for a selfie. That's going to be annoying. So at the very start of the video, I mean, I opened up with something a little dramatic, maybe too dramatic, but it's honestly not a stretch. This camera right here did change my life and it may have saved it from a life of mediocrity, from a a path of no passion and basically following what everyone else did before me. Uh, I used to be an accountant. I, If you guys are a listener to the podcast, I did a full podcast where I actually just basically shared my story in depth, which we'll have linked down below if you want to check out. But this camera was my first ever and uh it it wasn't this one it was the hero four silver it was not stabilized it was shaky it was 1080p and it was super super soft footage but it's what empowered me as a accountant a business student with no background in film or cinema or anything like that to basically start documenting my life and the reason i'm so fond of the gopro name is because it was that first $349 or $400 investment that basically gave me the life that I have today. It was by far the best investment I've made. I bought crypto at the top. That didn't play out nicely. (laughs) But buying my first GoPro, I mean, that was a thousand plus X investment and uh, very, very grateful to have kind of entered into this industry. And, you know, I think everyone needs their gateway, their entry into to filmmaking. And what I like about these cameras so much, you know, this is not an ad, by the way. I don't care whether you use a GoPro and Osmo. Like, I use all of them. I have all of them. I have Insta360. All these brands create great cameras. Um, and an iPhone nowadays is so damn good that you don't even need any of these th- in theory. It's very dependent on your use. So if you're not yet picking up your camera because you don't have the DSLR that I'm talking to, then you're wasting your time. You're missing out on so much opportunity to start developing your career as a filmmaker. I mean, I'm curious, did you, was that your first camera? And and tell me a little bit about it. Like, how did you even get started? I bought the first GoPro. I mean, you're so right. Like your gear does not make you a good cinematographer, a good editor at all. Um, I've seen people make that mistake. Like, oh, I need to wait for this camera because it's like, dude, you just need to improve your cinematography. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't, like, I yeah. Like, I need to just say that to your face. But, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a real thing. But um, yeah, I bought the first Hero One back in 2010. I think we're I think we're very similar in age. And I also did a business degree for four years. I didn't go into the nine to five. I remember mm-hmm. watching, that's how long I've been watching your videos for. Is like I remember watching your backpacking with the Hero Four Silver. And then I remember seeing a video of you like going back to Canada and doing this kind of thing. I was like, is he really doing this? I was like, I'm just graduating. I was like, I'm fine going to give it a go for a year or two i was like is he is he really doing that and then it was like i was like there's no way and you you did it for like what like six months and you're like and i'm going yeah yeah and then i left and yeah, i quit yeah, I my job I was, like, I was like there it is i was like it had to i was like there's no i was like if i'm gonna do it and you're not doing it, i was like how does that even make sense mm. um that's right, crazy right, that you've been so. uh, watching the channel that long yeah i mean yeah. that's yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's crazy man <laughs> but um and yeah. back to the thing of like relationships too like there's no more loyal or connected follower subscriber whatever you want to call it than the people from the gopro days they were there when when it was not sexy they were there when the cinematics were were 
in, non-existent. Yeah. But like the connection that has been formed was one of like, oh, I actually legitimately like this person or I connect with what they believe in, their, mm-hmm. their values, their whatever. So that's where like you actually in some way like really build the most core audience that you could ever have. Definitely. And I think I think back then you were so relatable to a certain audience of, of backpackers because you know, mm-hmm. that's what you were doing. You were backpacking, yeah. you were balling on a budget. Balling on a budget. And that's what you made videos about. And so many people want to backpack and research backpacking. I'm sure your SEO for backpackers was like insane back then. Yeah, probably. Um, so it's super relatable because it's it's just so raw and authentic back then. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I want to do so badly right now? <laughs> So I want to take uh, whatever the latest and greatest action cameras and I want to do like a 30 day, 30 vlog series in Thailand. I want to just buy a backpack and do it again. I've never done backpacking. Ooh, we might just do it together. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bro. the one thing I always looked at. Like, man, that'd be kind of cool. But like now I have all my, mm-hmm. gear, my gear. When I say gear, I mean just... a suitcase full of accessories i'm just like oh could i put this in a backpack but yeah. at the same time i'd love to challenge myself of like cool go on a trip one iphone or phone mm-hmm. um you know like two gopros and a drone that's yep. it and like no laptop and like learn how to edit better on a mobile phone did you hear about ryan trey trahan try try trahan is that the guy who went across America with the one dollar one cent whatever yeah he started with a penny and he basically traded his way across america uh, until he was able to, I don't know how much, to be honest, I didn't watch the series, but the concept is what fascinated me because he was creating a video every single day and he basically had to trade this penny until he find, found his way all the way to basically the opposite side of the country. And so the interesting thing about it was though, is like it wasn't filmed on a cinema camera or even a point and shoot. It was like his iPhone primarily Mm. and occasional like DSLR footage. But the thing that mattered here was like the story, the underlining story was very interesting to people. And that's kind of like, you know, for the last three, four months now, I've just been really called to, I'd say even probably close to 12 months. I've been called to just go back to doing like a very simplistic travel style where I pick up a simple camera and I just document the everyday adventures, the true feeling of getting lost. Mm. Something that, you know, I don't always have nowadays when I travel. Sometimes yeah. it's very it's very mission oriented and I've got my purpose and I'm mm. there for a reason. But uh, now I'd love to go to a place and just be like, oh, that sounds like a cool place to have dinner. Let's go there. Oh, let's go sunrise here. You know, just meeting people, exploring what yeah. travel kind of used to be for me, but then kind of moved away from when this all became such a business. Mm. No, I think that's it's such a true thing. There's certain creators that are just insane storytellers. I mean, Casey Neistat's kind of the first living yeah. proof of that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he is a good filmmaker, but he's he's not like a world-class cinematographer, but in, like yeah. one of the best storytellers ever. It's insane how he can make something so mm-hmm. normal, so entertaining and so captivating. Whereas that's something I'd love to be able to do, but I also really love like the epic visual storytelling side of it. But I want to kind of find that hybrid balance of the two, of having a good story t- story storyline but then having incredible visuals so a big part of me is when i am traveling i am on a mission i am working with athletes or models and we're Mm -hmm. trying to accomplish something so like back in 2019 like a big passion project of mine which i spent too much money on but it was something i wanted to do like i don't i don't make videos to make money i make money so i can make videos Mm -hmm. you know so and that's what this was it was like a cool i've got a friend who's an incredible wakeboarder he's insane at snowboarding what if we made a video where he's doing both and like doing the same, you know, double backflip on a snowboard and on a wakeboard. And what if we like blended it together? So we spent what was supposed to be two to three weeks filming this. We ended up, it ended up taking like four or five months because when I filmed snowboarding, the second last day he breaks his wrist. Okay. Oh no. Then we were going to shoot the wakeboard in the Philippines. So we had to push that back, cancel flights. Six weeks later, we're in the Philippines. Then he's at the time he was one guy who could, he had a trick that only he could do. Okay. There's only on the world who could do it. Yeah. But the jump in the Philippines wasn't big enough for it. It's like, okay, we're going to have to go film that in America because we know we can do it. So I, I had another job in America and we timed it there. And then while we were there, GoPro messaged me like, hey, can you go back to Turks and Caicos and get some wakeboard content? So I was like, hey, what if we go to the Turks and Caicos as well? And now we have another element in the video. We mm. had all these elements come together. But we released the video. It's one of my favorite videos, but it's just, it's just a visual 
banger. There's no storyline. But yeah. we have filmed an entire storyline of like what went, like all the blood, sweat and tears that went into this. You know, he has mm -hmm. no ACL on either knee. He wears a knee brace on either knee. Like yeah. you don't see that in the video. You watch this yeah. like, these guys had the sickest time ever. They went to the coolest places, but like yeah. what we both, especially him, what, what he put his body through mm -hmm. to make this happen and the story we have. So I've been working on it when I have the time because it's it's not a paid job. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to find like maybe a little sponsor for it at the end, but mm -hmm. um, there's a really good story to be told there and it's it's going to come out at some point. But yeah. um, Sounds like he's got the body of a, of a daily vlogger too. Yeah, he's a, he's a bionic man. I've, I've blown out my vertebrae, the top three. Uh, my eyes are going on me. <laughs> Not actually, but but God, the daily vlog is a grind. <laughs> I don't know how people do that, man. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do it for too long, but long enough. Mm. Yeah. Was, yeah. But uh, one thing I come to realize is like done, done is better than perfect. That's that's a fact. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it's been super cool to hear a little bit about your story. If you were to leave a filmmaker with, you know, one tip, what would that be? Oh, man. What's, um, what's the, the Chris Rogers right, word of right, wisdom? Right now, don't follow trends. Like, yeah, because trends don't make you original. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to leave a legacy by following trends. That's true. Yeah. Like yeah. also, also like create, create as a filmmaker, create the stuff you want to get paid for. So like I've seen videos that I create that might go viral, but I don't really like making them. So I was like, cool, what, what is the stuff I wanna get paid for? I want people to pay me mm -hmm. to travel, to surf, to snowboard. Cool, I'm gonna go invest money of my own into that, make cool videos, and then it builds my portfolio. And then people are like, hey, we've seen you done this. Like, yeah. And I've seen that return on investment. It's like, I want people to pay me to do this, so I'm gonna go do that. Even if it costs me money, mm -hmm. you really believe in it and you do a good job of it you will then get paid to do that that actually brings me to one last question i really want to hear from you because mm -hmm. there's very few people that have your specialty where you can surf snowboard you basically do anything that has that extreme element to it is there a full-time living to be made out of this career profession are there many people traveling the world getting paid to do action sport photography videography not not like they used to be this is like brutally honest but the action sports industry is it's shifting a lot like and guys have talked about this on surfing podcasts and whatnot you know when there used to be like a big swell in tahiti you'd have mm -hmm. like 100 photographers there there was a massive one a couple of months ago and there was like three photographers there because you know back in the day you'd have these magazines paying hundreds and thousands of dollars for a photo for an image it's all kind of instant now you know the the mm -hmm. day of a surf movie of a snowboard movie is kind of died Wow. It's all instant Instagram. People have like a video part that comes down, but it's all this short form content right now, like we said. Yeah. So which is a lot cheaper. Yeah. So there there is, but not in the old traditional sense. Yeah. So like for me, my way of doing it is I'm kind of, you know, I'm not trying to get into a surf publication or snowboard publication. I'm trying to build my own platform. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, who is Chris filming with? Like which athlete is he with now? Where are they doing? What are they doing? I think on that element there is. Um, yep. Some of the brands in these industries have decent budget, but it's more like a third party brand. You know, it's like Billabong and Quicksilver. They don't have the money like they used to. But yeah. if you want to get a big paycheck in surfing, you know, uh, Jeep are going to write a big paycheck and Corona beer, you mm -hmm. know, like a not a not surf industry related. Not where it used to come from. Exactly. But yeah, there's definitely, there's de there's 100% opportunity. It's just changed. I love that South African. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it has changed. It's shifted a lot. Um, arguably for the better in a way. And, mm -hmm. and guys are talking about this. There's a really incredible series that I've been watching. Um, by stab which is stab is like a big surf publication there used to be a magazine and they saw the they saw the picture longer and like could we going online and then they created a paywall and their content behind the paywall is really good mm. and they have a series right now called how surfers get paid and they're breaking down all the different ways the photographers get paid the pro surfers the free surfers mm -hmm. um all different elements and it's really good and the, there's that's almost all athletes nowadays. It's like you don't get paid for your sport. You get paid for your, your reputation and your media. Exactly. So, you know, you have your exceptions of like, if you are the best, yeah. it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. you're the best. But then you, you got a big enough paycheck to hire a filmer, hire an editor. You can outsource mm -hmm. the whole thing. But then you've got these other, these new um, surf vloggers. Surf, surfing YouTubers has become a big thing recently. I mean, it's a huge sport. Millions of people do it. Yeah. And you've got these people who've built entire careers and they're not necessarily in the core sense of pro surfer, but they have a really epic 
surfing related YouTube channel okay. out of it. I'm going to make a paddle YouTube channel. <laughs> paddle vlogs. I beat Nicholas Crystal, everyone. Just wanted you to know that. Oh, you're talking about, I thought you meant like paddling for surfing, but you mean like paddle the tennis paddle. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> tennis paddle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which if you hear construction, that's literally what's being built next door. There. I still haven't played it. Apparently it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Well, guys, it was awesome to have this chat with uh, an absolute legend and uh, somebody that I think you can take a lot of inspiration from, especially if you are that person that we kind of talked about where you're thinking that you're not ready to get your good camera. You're not ready to start up. Just go ahead, pick one of these up and be shocked at how much it can do for you or don't spend a single cent. Use the camera on the back of your phone because it's more than capable. And one more thing I do want to add, guys, this is not our first podcast. We're now about 10 episodes deep and there's been some awesome chats with Nicholas Crystal, who I beat in paddle. We've got Egg on. We've got Robbie interviewing a bunch of talented creators from Lost Creator Academy who are on their way up. So there's all different levels from 18 million followers to having just a few thousand. And that's and that's why the Lost Creator Podcast provides so much insight because it gives you all these different perspectives. And if you want to become a part of our creator family, right now we have 4,000 people inside of Lost Creator Academy, which is our exclusive place for creators to learn everything, photography, videography, storytelling, and business. And we actually have an entire one hour webinar, which is a chance to come hang out with me, see how it's all done. And, uh, it's all linked down below. And with that, I want to end it. Chris, thank you so much for coming. Guys, thanks it's, for having me. Chris is all, all of his stuff is linked down below, but you can also check him out here at Chris Rogers. Um, thank you, bro. Thanks. Man.